Get us together. Sexy or sexy? <laughs> I won six national championships from all my room. Uh, and then he was a district manager from 2013 to 2015. Uh, his passion is empowering people and bringing out the best of themselves. And for you guys who coach with him, you really see that he does that. Uh, the way uh, Randy works with his people, I have never seen a coach, not a district manager, but a coach work that way, being on call and giving it his all for his people. Uh, currently, he's a basketball coach for youth, middle school, and high school. Uh, he started consulting this summer, and he's the president of Excellent Group, Inc. Uh, with that being said, Mr. Uh, Randy Excellent, if we could give it up. Yeah! Give it up, Randy! Oh, yeah! Let's go! It's the man. GCK? We three champions! GCK? We three champions! GCK? We three champions! So I'm very, very happy to be here. I'm excited to uh, be able to um, add value to you guys in some capacity. How many of you guys are excited for Limo Night? Yeah. Cool, cool. So who's excited about finishing the summer strong? Yeah. Who here? Who here has grown this summer? Yeah. Raise your hand. Yeah. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. How does it feel to grow? It feels good, but it feels excellent. You're either grow, green or growing, or brown or dying. You never say the same. And I want to uh, thank Kathy for giving me the opportunity to be here. Uh, me and Kathy have you know, worked together for a very, very long time. I'll tell you a little story. Um, I didn't start with Kathy, I started in a district office that was about an hour and a half away and um, as a sales rep I went to SC1 and saw the dominance uh, that Kathy's organization had. I uh, went to SC2, saw the dominance that Kathy's team had and at the end of SC2 it's kind of wrapping up like this at this moment and she was in the back she was writing stuff down because I think she was going to wrap up the meeting for SC2 and I walked up to her and I said I want to work with you. I want to work with you. I want to be a champion. I want to be one of the best. And you're one of the best in our company. And I want to be a part of whatever you got. Come to find out she had no assistant managers going into the fall. So it was like, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, but she scooped me up. Uh, she scooped a girl named Katie Capone up on the fall of 2007. She came from Rhode Island. And I was an hour north. And we had the opportunity to do some great things. and. Grew a lot in that process. I was coaching basketball. I was going to school. I was a sophomore, going into my sophomore year. Um, system manager. Had to sell because I wanted to be a branch. So I had a lot of things on my plate. And a lot of you guys are about to go into that experience of uh, being an assistant manager. Going, how many of you guys, obviously, all you, most of you guys are going back to school. All right. How many of you guys are staying local to your territory? How many of you guys are going away? So, uh, who here? is excited about the GCLA opportunity that's not staying in their local territory. You have to go away for school, but you're excited about the GCLA opportunity and having the opportunity to potentially branch, assist a manager, whatever the case may be. That's gonna require more effort. It's gonna require um, desire. Because I had to drive 100 miles round trip every single day. I had school, I had to drive 50 miles back to go coach my team, then drive 50 miles back to Kathy's office to run interviews, PDI, leave the office at 10 o'clock at night, and then drive back home and I had class at 8 a.m. the next day. So what, what allowed me to do that was the drive and the passion, uh, knowing what I wanted and what I wanted to go after. So I'm very excited uh, to see the leadership that this division has. I'm excited to see all the people here that are excited about learning and growing and taking advantage of an opportunity to, that's gonna live with them forever. I'm excited for the, where the division is going and how you guys are gonna grow in that process and the people you're gonna become in the time here. So, um, some of you guys have just started. This might be your first conference. Um, I know so, I talked to someone that just started this, literally left training like a day ago, and he's here. And he's like, most people in my training class aren't. And how many of you guys right now are the sole person that was in their training class? District managers, FSM, CSPs, Okay, look around the room. Okay, 
My basketball coach, when I was younger, told me this. The cowards never show up to the battle. The weak die off and only the strong survive. And you guys are the strong ones. And some, some of you guys may be cowards between now and next summer and just disappear. Some of you guys may quit in that process. And some of you guys are going to be strong and be better people in the next year. Hopefully you guys choose number three. Hopefully you guys choose number three. So guys, my goal is to leave you guys with some thoughts to really take advantage of your opportunity and have a breakthrough in your own way. <clears throat> because it's all about your story. A lot of people had some great stories during the push. Everyone had their own individual stories. From your first sale, for some of you guys, your first set sale, your first ultimate, your first signature set, your first $1,000 day, $2,000 day, $3,000 day, your first 3K order, 4K order, 7K order. <laughs> you know, you guys had breakthroughs. And whether you hit your goal for the push or not, take a step back and think about what you did in the last 18 days. Whether you did the most appointments you've ever done since you started the job. Whether it's the adversity you had to overcome. Mrs. Jones telling you no, but you broke through and got someone to say yes, even though they said no. And that gives you confidence now. When someone says no, it doesn't really mean no. So I wanted to uh, have you guys jot something down if you guys can grab pen and paper. I want you guys to allow yourselves to be introspective and look within for a minute because that's what it's all about. I want you guys to think about this. And I'm sure all of you guys have thought about this to some capacity in your life, and it's allowed you to get to this point, whether um, you know things are working out for you, you're struggling right now, um, or just figuring it out. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? I want you guys leaving here thinking about that. Some of you guys already know that answer. Some of you guys don't. Follow up question to that is what do you want to be about? Who do you want to be? And what do you want to be about? Give you guys a few minutes to jot a few of those things down and put some thoughts down on your paper and I'll give you some thought joggers on some stuff. What characteristics do you want to embody? What characteristics do you want to embody? Do you want to be someone that is a person of their word, hardworking, caring, passionate? When people talk about you, what adjectives do you want them to say? What type of person do you want to be? What things would you like to do? What things would you like to do? What type of experiences do you want to have? Do you want to be a 30K rep, 50K rep? Do you want to be a branch? Do you want to be an assistant manager? Do you want to be someone with more confidence? Do you want to be someone that overcomes challenges? What things would you like to do? It doesn't have to be places. But what places do you want to see? What type of things do you want to experience in your life? What type of relationships do you want to focus on? What relationships do you want to focus more on? Maybe being a better brother, better sister, better son, better daughter, better friend, better coworker, better leader. Because when you focus on the things that help you be better, it drives you. Last thing I want you guys to think about is what opportunities do you want to create for yourself and others? By you going after who you want to be, it allows you to empower others to go after who they want to be. Because when you grow, 
and there's people around you, would you hope that the people around you grow too? Do you want to be that water to someone's flower? Or do you want to be the off spray or whatever they call it? <laughs> what do they call that thing? Monsanto. Monsanto. Viva Monsanto. What is that called? Roundup. Roundup. The weed killer. <laughs> the person killer. Do you want to suck the life out of it, people or do you want to bring the life into people? If you want to branch, you're creating an opportunity for yourself, but also you're creating an opportunity for others. When you're an assistant manager, you're creating an opportunity for yourself, but you're also creating opportunities for others. When you're a sales rep, you obviously create opportunities for yourself, but also you help your customers have the opportunity to own the best. Not many people have the opportunity to own the best, and you every day give people that opportunity. So looking at that, some of you guys dream to have, be who that person is on the paper. Some of you guys are, I'm on my way. Some of you guys are like, I don't know how the hell I'm gonna get there. Right, it scares you, right? But dreams and vision drive us, drive us. You gotta have dreams, you gotta have a vision for who you wanna be, what you wanna be about, because that gets you up on a daily basis. How does someone, how do people, how do a group of people in this room, how many guys were on the Alliance, raise your hand. Okay, what drives you, or what vision did you have that made you wake up every single morning for the last month? Right, you had a dream, you had a vision of something better. Whether it was you personally, whether where, by doing the thing that you did, where was it gonna take you, what position was gonna put you in financially maybe, how it was gonna help you pay for school, take the burden off your parents, Prove them wrong. It was something for every single one of you guys. You had a vision. And we gotta find a way every single day to connect what we do on a daily basis to our dreams. We gotta find a way to connect what we do on a daily basis to our dreams. Why do you get up every single morning and go to the office to make phone calls? Why do you go to your demos? Why would you drive two hours to go see a lady that potentially might no-show you? Right, because you have a dream or a vision for something else, right? And dreams motivate people to get out of bed in the morning and make something of their life. And I wanna let you guys know, if you don't believe this in yourself right now, I'll tell you, and your managers will tell you, you all are unique. Every single one of you guys are unique. And we're unique in the sense that we have the ability to imagine a more abundant life, an abundant future, and take proactive steps to create that future, right? Everyone has that, everyone in this room has that unique opportunity to go after it. Some people that you walk by on a daily basis have given up on their future. Given up on going after what they want in life. Personal story. Um, someone very close to me currently had a very close loss to them. Um, they were with this person since they were 17 years old. And when you, when you want something more and the people around you don't, it's hard, right? Right? Because you want to bring them up. You're trying to do things to help them become better. But they don't want it for themselves. Or they don't see it. Or they don't get it. Or they just gave up and lost sight. And you try to pull them, try to pull them try to help them to become better, and they just resist, resist, push you away, push you away, push you away. To the point where you're like, I mean, they're gonna push me away to the point that, you know what I mean, I, I, gotta, I gotta help myself. I can't change who I am or lose myself in the process to help you find yourself. You guys know what I'm talking about. Whether you have a friend like that, a parent like that, or you have a friend that has gone through that experience. Well, this person's partner that they were with for so, so long, she said, you know what? Let me just take a step back and let that person find themselves while I find myself. And maybe we can meet back up and grow together. In that month, that decision was made for her, he ended. 
He ended his life. There was no living for him. He couldn't take it. He had a master's degree in business, super smart, super intelligent, but didn't allow himself to, you know, become. And some of us walk around like the show Walking Dead. People literally walk around as the Walking Dead because they've given up on their life. And I would hate for anyone in this room to not believe in their opportunity to create and imagine an abundant future. It's out there. And since that moment, one of the things that we talk about, the things that I mentioned to her, and what's challenging for her, is to believe that. That's someone I see that's super strong, despite all the things that's gone wrong, that might, that other people be like, man, that sucks. I would hate to, you know, I couldn't even imagine. You would never guess it. You would never guess it. She has a passion for kids, she has a passion for art, and she just goes at it every single day. Works three jobs because she wants to, not because she has to. Because she wants to be able to do the things that she wants. And something I tell her all the time is, we're gonna build an empire together. We're gonna build a life together. And she's like, not for me. I'm not meant to have a great life. I'm meant to just have what I have. And people believe that. And people tell themselves that. I'm not worth it. I don't believe it, whatever the case may be. And he who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. We are our dreams. We are our dreams. We are our dreams, right? And if you don't know where you, if you're not willing to take risks, it's because you have nothing that you're willing to take a risk for. So be bold, mighty, and the forces will come to your aid. A lot of you guys are bold and mighty in the last two weeks in the last month, in the last year, your whole life, you've had to be bold and mighty to be in this position right now and be here because a lot of people would have quit. A lot of people have quit to this moment right now. And I just want to share a few stories because there's a lot of awesome stories that happened uh, during this, this push period. And the biggest thing that I've taken from all the stories that I've seen is just perseverance. And every time something great happens after someone has some challenges, those that are in my group during coaching, when something great happened, you're like, hey, I sold the signature set. Was that like awesome job or did I laugh? I literally laughed. But they're like, yeah, so I was with this customer and we just talked on the phone and everything was going wrong. And they're just like, man, I give up. I don't even want to do this anymore. Or they're avoiding my call, right? Uh, <laughs> and we talk and they're like, hey, this happened for me. I just got 77 wrecks when I had no wrecks. Or I wasn't happy with the people I saw and I met a guy that's a business owner gave me 45 leads to business owners that opened up my push. And in 10 orders, I sold 500 bucks. Or six orders, I sold 500 bucks. And in my next five orders, I sold seven. I laugh at that. Like, ha ha, you thought things were going bad and look what happened. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny how that works? When things are going terrible. Kamani Rando had a great push. Number one new rep. Second to last day, he was having some, he was having some challenges. Things were coming a little bit easier. The last, the last couple days were challenging for him. And he was pushing it, pushing it. And he's like, hey, there's this guy that doesn't want to buy. He's an hour away. What do you think I should do? And I was like, go. <laughs> there might be something great that happens from it. No sale, no rest. <laughs> I'm like, you can't make this up. Like, you can't make this up. You can't make it. I literally laughed like hard. <laughs> I was trying to build it. And we just cracked up. Come on, he's just silent. <laughs> he didn't call me the last two days of the push because of that. Because I laughed at him. But I laughed at him because despite him being at twenty three thousand dollars for the push up to that point, he wasn't satisfied with his results. He wasn't enjoying the moment. So I just laughed at him. 
And Billy laughed at him. I laughed at him. I was just laughing at the circumstance. But right? he was pushing it, giving everything he's got. He's stressing out because he got one or two devils in the day. He's making 75 calls to find one, and that one just didn't work out. So after I go on my rant and share my perspective, I'm like, you got something for me? Anything? Comment? Question? Feedback? Anything? Because I'm like, you can choose how you respond to this. I choose to laugh, right, in that moment. You can choose to laugh, hate that person you just saw, hate the push, hate the fact that you've, you know, put everything you got and it's not going your way. Or you can respond in a way that that's funny, or I'm excited to see what comes next, or whatever. You can choose how to respond to things. You can either go one way and allow it to take you that way, or you can choose to have it go another way. It's like um, the five minute rule. I tell um, some of my people this. It's okay to be frustrated, upset, angry, negative emotions, right? But you, after you do that, you gotta ask yourself, what can you control? What was in your control? That allows you to learn from, this, from the experience. And then you can say, what can I do mo moving forward to make sure that doesn't happen again? So a lot of you guys have felt pain, right? And a lot, some of you guys allow that pain to continue to happen to you. And you just expect it, it's just part of it, connected to this job, and you have no sale or two. You just believe everyone else is gonna say no. Or if you get no recs on a couple appointments, you just or don't ask Rex the right way, right? You just expect them to say no? You guys know what I'm talking about? So in that moment, you gotta, what did I do in that moment to not get the results I wanted? Did I connect with my customer? Did I ask the right questions? Was I surfacey or not? You know what I mean? Was I deep with them? Was I not? Did I make a friend on that appointment or did I not? Could I have left that appointment with a hug or could I have not? What could I do differently in order to make sure X, Y, and Z happens. If you don't know the answer, what do you think you should do? Find the answer through somebody that's gone through the same experience you had, managers, reps that have sold more than you, that have been in the same experience you have. You gotta find a way. Does everyone understand that? Okay, and I wanna leave you guys with this. Three things to take action leaving here. Three things to take action on your dreams. Guys, people do things for two reasons. To feel pressure or to avoid pain. To feel pleasure or to avoid pain. They'll take action towards things to be on stage and have their peers cheer for them, or people won't take action because of fear that they won't make it on stage, right? That thought could fuel you or cripple you in that sense. So number one thing you gotta do to take action on your dreams is embrace growth. Embrace growth. I looked up the definition for growth. It said the, the act or process, the development, the gradual increase. A lot of you guys grew through this point right now. You took the actions, you accepted the process of going through the alliance, reading the manual, going through training, going to your phone jams, PC with your manager, whatever the case may be. And you've seen gradual increase and that's going to lead towards your development. And anytime you wanna grow, ask yourself, what do I need to grow in? Why do I wanna grow in it? And how do I grow in that? So if you wanna be an assistant manager, what do you need to do to get there? Why do you want to be an assistant manager and how are you going to take action to make that happen for you? Embrace growth. Number two guys, take advantage of the rest of the summer. Take advantage of the rest of the summer. The summer ends August 29th and there's a lot up for grabs. Some of you guys just started, you can get that letter of recommendation to separate yourself from your peers. Go back to school with that. All-American Scholarship. A lot of you guys are in the race. A lot of you guys are right outside. And I encourage you to give it everything you got these next three weeks. I'll guarantee you right now leaving this conference, people are going to stop working. You can literally, if you didn't have the push you wanted, if you didn't have the week you wanted, 
You didn't have the summer you wanted. You can change it today moving forward. Kathy leaving this event when she was a representative in the month of August sold $28,000 in the last three weeks to win a scholarship. What's possible for you? What's possible for you? There's a lot to take advantage of from the events team, GCLA, CFC. If you didn't have the push you wanted, you better go after it for the next one. Prepare, do what you need to do. A lot of you guys have got more skill set, more recommendations, higher average doors than you've ever had in your career, and it would be a shame if you let that momentum go. Because we all know when you let momentum go, some of the people I coach with, you let a couple days go by. It takes a week to get going again. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Okay? Some of you guys took days off during the push and it took a couple phone jams, like hardcore phone jams during the day to create a three or four demo day three days later. And hopefully that didn't cancel rescheduling you, right? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> Happened to Mason. Take advantage of the mindset you can create for yourself. Take advantage of the opportunity to have the mindset to be unstoppable unshakable. Don't allow things to affect you. Have unwavering faith. Take unwavering action to go after what you want. And take advantage of the growth here. Take advantage of the growth here. And I want to leave you with this last quote or last thought. You'll seldom experience regret for anything you've done. It's what you haven't done that will torment you. Therefore, the message is clear, guys. Just do it. Go after it. Decide. Choose. Develop an appreciation for the present. Do now what your future self will thank you for. I made the decision today that no more. For some of you guys, when I first started talking to you, that, that was the decision you made. No more. No more being average. No more settling, no more just being good. Let's be great, let's be great. Seize every second of your life and savor it. Value your present moments, using them to build you up in any self-defeating ways. Value your present moments, use them to build you up in any self-defeating ways And if you allow yourself to not be present and be self-defeating in any way, you've lost the moment forever. If you're in the moment and you're thinking about being defeated or not being good enough or not being great enough, you've lost it forever. You've lost that moment forever. So every moment, decide to be confident. Decide to go after what you want. Decide that it's your time. I ask my people all the time, hey, what time is it? They're like, uh, it's like 12.30. I'm like, no, it's your time to shine, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, it is my time to shine. And then they go and shine. So, choose to be great, choose to go after your dreams, and never give up on yourself. Thank you.